Tonight we are going to be doing a panel with our leadership team here, and I'm going to go quickly. Keenan, and Carissa, Mauricio Weston. What up, what up, what up? You guys probably up, know them. Howdy. Mauricio was previously on our young adult lead team, and he left us to go to Hillsong, Phoenix, and so we're so glad he's back yes. here with us. Yes. Um, but first, please just uh, briefly talk about how you got your start in the ministry. Yeah, so um, my name's Keenan. Those of you who don't know me, um, I am 25 years old, and I started traveling and preaching when I was 18, um, and still do that to this day. But uh, I started vocational ministry at 20, so I've been like a vocational pastor for like, five years. Yeah, awesome. I'm Carissa. I have been in ministry since I was 16, when we were allowed back then, and I began in kids' church a ministry. I'm still very passionate about. That's awesome. And awesome. I'm 27 now. What? You're 27? 27. Every time I heard it, and I'm still surprised. 27 years old. Yeah, Mauricio, how old are you? Uh, 27. <laughs> 27. Um, <laughs> okay. It just got dark. Okay. It is night. Hey, wow. I'm still here, you guys. What's going Look at on? me. It's always darkest before the dawn. Ooh, Mauricio, continue. He's preaching, uh, ladies and gentlemen. How long have you been in the ministry, Mauricio? My name, my name is Mauricio. I uh, born and raised in San Angelo. I, I started uh, ministry here. Um, thank you for those of you who can't see me. Um, thanks, bro. Uh, I grew up in the ministry. My grandpa is a pastor of a Spanish church. And here in here town, we are. I, uh, I got saved at a very young age. But when I really started taking ministry serious um, was about five years ago. Five when years. I started, when I started uh, attending Celebration Church. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Well, I got started in ministry in uh, middle school when I was able to volunteer in kids church. So I got started there and then just started volunteering there. And then after high school, started volunteering in the youth um, group. And then um, I've actually been on staff here at the church for a year now. Awesome. Great. Thank and you. while you're speaking, might as well speak on um, your passion for young adult ministry and where does that come from? Awesome. Yeah. So being um, in, in the younger part of the young adults group, um, I know that for a lot of my friends and a lot of my peers, that this is a really confusing in a really hard time. And so that just really pulls on my heart. And so I'm just doing everything I can to help them maneuver through this hard time of life. That's great. Mauricio? Yeah, I, I think for me, my, my passion for young adult ministry started, um, man, as soon as I realized that I didn't have it all together. And I, I recognized real quick that I needed help in this thing called life. And so now being on the other side of the older young adults, um, I, I just have a passion now for, for being able to help those who who are trying to still figure it out. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. So for me, it began, I don't know. Okay, so this question makes me emotional only because I moved to San Angelo in 2010, and I just decided, hey, why not go to ASU all by yeah. myself, no friends? Wow. And that really played, like, a toll on me because I felt really lonely. So I was looking for a community. I was looking for... Um, just a group of people that would accept me. So I think the Lord ever since has really placed this idea of belonging on my heart. And so um, that, and that has never left me. So I think for me, it's just creating this space of belonging that, you know, we have a lot of college kids come to San Angelo and I just want them to have that sense of belonging in a community. And I am, that's good. That's why I'm here. That's really good. Um, for me, um, obviously, I, we, I started our young adult ministry, pioneered it uh, five years ago, which a lot of people think we're a brand new thing. They think we, started, we are not. They think we started young adults last year, which I honestly kind of feel like we almost like it had seems, a rebirth. It seems almost like we, we did. We almost yeah. had a rebirth uh, in 2019. But uh, yeah, I was fresh out of Bible school, wide eyed and just still wet behind the ear. Um, and my dad was like, hey, I want you to, uh, I want you to pioneer. This is so funny. I want you to pioneer our young adult ministry, which we only had like a young adult small group at the time, and there were like three people going. And so I was like, okay, like I knew I like enjoyed preaching, but I didn't necessarily feel called to youth ministry, but I didn't really ever think about being a college pastor, probably just because I was so young. And so my dad gave me the task and I was like, all right, let's do it. And so we started a young adult small group that met in a living room, honestly, just a few blocks from where we're sitting right now. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't long. I think we had eight people that first yeah. night and it wasn't long before all of a sudden we, we outgrew that space. And so we started meeting at uh, my mom and dad's house and it wasn't long before we literally had people like sitting up the staircase, like peeking through the railing yeah. at us. Like that was me. we did no worship. <laughs> we did no worship. 
Uh, and it was just literally me sitting there in the middle of the living room with my iPad and, and teaching. And I'd ask questions. And um, it wasn't long before we outgrew that space, obviously, and we had to move to the church. And I, th- I literally feel like we, our young adults has met in almost every space inside the church except for the nursery and the bathroom. Like, yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. Okay. We've met everywhere And else. I'm not against meeting in the bathroom. Okay. No. Um, so we've literally met in like almost every single space. And then it was really last year. Um, I felt like there were a lot of things that God just kind of had to rewire, kind of had to get in place, had to kind of assemble um, what really is now our dream team um, in order to um, push us and and catalyst us into the place we are now. And now we're seeing um, exponential growth. We're seeing, we have literally not had probably a night in what, like a year and a half where at least three people didn't say yes to Jesus for the first time. Yeah, amen. And so it's just been absolutely incredible. Uh, We really began, as you guys know, obviously I'm preaching to the choir, but we really began to just really take God seriously and began to fast and pray as a team. And it's just amazing whenever you all get in one accord and you get together, um, what all you can accomplish, you know, whenever yeah. God really is the, the wind at your back. And so my passion for young adult ministry Love Love um, is really just because I truly do believe that isolation is the breeding ground for insanity. Yeah. Um, when you get isolated, wow. all of a sudden you begin to go absolutely nuts. Mm-hmm. You begin to be somebody you were, you never thought you'd be. You begin to think things you never thought you'd think. And I really do believe that, you know, my preaching it, it, it's, 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 it's subpar, you know I mean? It's whatever. But like, I really do think that our community, just the, the love and the, the openness, the transparency that we share, I really think that's what is uh, attracting people to it. And that's what we're here to provide. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that hundred awesome. percent. Uh, so for this panel, we don't really have a theme, uh, necessarily other than young adults. Um, we are just going to kind of roll through these questions as they come and the conversation is kind of going to go where it goes. So our first question, um, speaks to singleness, which is something that it's not something you deal with, but it's something you go through. It doesn't have to be sad. And that's kind of what we want to speak on on, is, um, how do you keep trusting God? when his timeline looks different than yours when it comes to finding a spouse. So everybody, you know, when you're 14, you have an ideal timeline of when you're gonna get married, when you're gonna have a kid and all of these things, but trusting in God and looking that maybe that's not how it's turning out exactly how you'd planned. Um, what does that look like and how do you, how do, you do that? Oof, my heart just started racing. Mauricio wants to go first. <laughs> so, uh, man, this is, uh, so I'm single, uh, I think, a lot of us here are. Uh, and you just I pointed at the West End. Are. I'm the only <laughs> and, one uh, about to get married. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, I, man, that's a, it's a loaded question. It's a good question. Um, I'm 27. I haven't I haven't been in a, in a relationship as an adult. Uh, so the last relationship I was in was in high school. And so navigating through that in my young adult years has been has been tough. Um, but at the same time. Um, Quick story, real quick. Uh, I remember, I remember being at home, and I remember I was like, I think I was probably like 20, 21, and I was just complaining. I wanted a girlfriend. I mean, right? Yeah. Who doesn't yeah. want a girlfriend? Give me that GF. Uh, I wanted a girlfriend, and I wanted a boo, and so <laughs> I, uh, I was like, Mom, I want a girlfriend, and Mom, this, and I don't know why I was telling my mom. You know, she was gonna go buy one at the store or something. Um, but I remember her. I remember her telling me this. She, she calmed me down. She paused, paused me for a second. She's like. Hey, Hey, mijo. And I was like, what's up? And it's kind of annoyed already. And she's like, she's like, why are you so worried about your future if your trust is in the one who holds it? And I thought That's to myself, good. dang, like it hit me because it challenged me. I was like, is my trust really, is my future, you know, am I trusting God with my future? And, and I'll be honest, at that moment, I wasn't. And after that, I, it just challenged me every single day. And it reminded me that, you know what? Like, God got to me. God got to me. Uh, I wanted to be married at this age, and it hasn't happened. I wanted to have kids at this age. It hasn't happened. But at the end of the day, um, if I'm trusting in God, and, and, and I'm, I'm where he wants me every single day, where, where I'm at in five years or ten years, if I'm just leaning into him and being where he wants me uh, that day and taking it day by day, I'll be where he wants me in five years. I'll be exactly where he wants me in, those, yeah. in ten years. Yeah. And so... That's one, that, the one thing that's really helped me. Yeah. Super good. Yeah, really yeah that's good. real good. Anybody else want to chime in? I'll chime in as a girl perspective. Female. I think for um, girls, it's hard only because 
like you see it everywhere. Um, weddings happening. I'm sure if you scroll on your Facebook, girls speaking to you, that you'll see more and more of your friends are getting engaged. And, and the thing about trust is that you don't necessarily have to understand. Um, so you may be like, I don't understand, like what's wrong with me? And we instantly go to like self reflection and like there's flaws in you. But usually the funny thing is when I get to that point, I discover more about myself and how to make myself a better person. And I think that the Lord really just, while in our non-understanding, in our misunderstanding and whatever understanding you want to call it, that the Lord is working on you and he's working on the perfect person for you. And we don't have to understand that. And it's hard for us to trust in him because we feel like there's this timeline put on us. Like there's this by 27, you're supposed to be married and have like kids already, which you don't. Um, God has his own timeline and it has nothing to do with the timeline that we see. So awesome. keep trusting, yeah. um, know that God's working in, in your life, working on you. you. He's making you into the perfect person for that perfect person yeah. for you. Um, and yeah. I think, I think a, a cool scripture that I go along with that is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's, it's trust. You, you talk about not leaning on your own understanding, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding yeah. in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths he will make your path straight that's good and good. that's that's exactly yeah. what you're talking about so yeah that's really good yeah i think a lot of people when it comes to singleness i think a lot of us we consider a waiting season a wasted season you know mm. what i mean and so a season of waiting doesn't have to be a season of withering it doesn't have to be a season of wasting it could really be a season of preparing um a wise man once told me anything that shows up too early shows up premature shows up too small mm. and so um, when you allow things to marinate and when you allow things to sit not in the microwave but in the crock pot um it's going to be so so much better um in the end you know what i mean so if we we love a good crock I'm pot getting around hungry. here. We're in West I'm Texas. Like oh, that good cooking metaphor give me that Chris roast. Says. I'm hungry. You know? I'm give me that meat. But I really do believe that singleness is an opportunity to live the life you're never going to have again. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember yeah. a couple years ago, I, I was really upset. Um, like things just hadn't been working out, like just um, in different areas of my life. And all of a sudden, God just kind of like redirected my attention to the fact that like I right now have permission to use my money how I want to use my money. Use my free time how Keenan Clark solely wants to use his free time. To go spend three o'clock in the morning with the boys and not have to let anyone know where I was at. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can go and I can go and do whatever. I can go practice the guitar. Boys. You know what I'm saying? Saturdays are for the boys. What up? And so I, I can literally just do whatever I wanted with my time. And and not that that's like the end all be all and that's like the holy grail, but that is a special time that when you're married, it, it's not the same. Okay, you may, God willing, have a spouse who's very understanding and very permissive and gives you space to be your own person and have time with yourself and your friends. But at the end of the day, like you've now got to die to you and you're now living to make sure another person is fulfilled, make sure that literally they are the, they, you, you belong to them at that point. And so the season of singleness, um, it doesn't have to be uh, the most painful thing uh, in your entire life. It can really be something that sets you up. And a lot of people, they spend their time looking for the right person, but I really encourage people to become the kind of person the person you're looking for is looking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Become the person, the person you would be looking for, the kind of person they're looking for, become that person, mm -hmm. okay? Because you attract what you are, you really do. And so if you want a godly man, be a godly woman. If you want a godly woman, be a godly man. Yeah. Have some freaking standards. Set the bar, ooh, draw a line ooh, in the sand. Ooh. Come on, bro, let's go. Okay, don't compromise. Anybody who is, right. who is willing to break uh, God's rules or God's, uh, God's parameters inside of your relationship will probably go behind your back in marriage to break God's rules and God's parameters. And so wow. if they're willing to cheat with you, they're probably willing to cheat on you. Okay, so that's all Yikes. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Man, I missed, I missed hearing you preach, bro. <laughs> God, <laughs> Don't get me going, dog. So good going. to be back in the 325. Weston? Oh, man, I mean, I, I, I agree 100% with what everyone's saying, especially the whole thing of, uh, um, you know, having the mindset of the waiting season's a wasted season when... I mean, really, it's more of a, uh, uh, instead of a waiting season, it's a preparing season. It's not you're just sitting there waiting around. It's actually a time to work on yourself to be better. For when that person comes, you are ready to not only, you know, be the person they need to be, but be the, be the person that your family needs you to be. Yeah. 
and everything else. So that's good. That's good. Uh, so our next question is, what would you say is the difference between a calling and a career? And does everyone have a calling? That's really good. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go for it real quick. Um, to me, uh, right off the bat, the difference between a calling and a career, a career is something you're paid to do, and a calling is something you were made to do. And so um, something that just makes you come alive, something that if there was no paycheck, there was no real benefit, you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody has things that like nobody has to pay them to do. There are people who go play endless hours of basketball. No one has to go and pay them to do that. Mm -hmm. There's, there are people who spend endless times just creating code. I know that sounds really crazy, but like on computer, like they enjoy it, okay? So you got to find what you were made to do, not just what you're paid to do. And when you allow God to steer your life, I really do believe... Per, I do. I believe that he will allow the two to converge and eventually yeah. you can get paid to do what you were made to do. And that's, yeah. and I do believe everybody has a calling. I'd love to hear Carissa or Mauricio because currently you two are serving in the ministry in multiple capacities, but are working in other fields for your careers as of right now. So I'd love to hear what you guys, either of you think on this. Okay. So going back to what Keenan said about the line it can overlap, it can merge. That is 100% true in my life. Um, like I said earlier, I have a, a heart for people belonging, making sure people feel comfortable, making sure people feel taken care of, and I just happen to work in a orthopedic office where we take care of a whole bunch of people who are hurting and all of their bones and all their joints. And so for me, it's something that I enjoy um, greeting them with a happy face and making sure that we make them feel loved and taken care of and supported and that's something that i do on sunday and i do on thursdays and um the your calling can look a lot of different ways um who knew that the lord called me to smile at people so everyone's calling looks different and it can easily be made apparent in your career that's good i love that i i, I think I think you can easily fall into the trap of like, well, I'm not in church. I'm not paid, you know, to be a preacher, to be a pastor. So I don't have a calling and all that. But like you're saying, I think every single day is an opportunity to live out the call of God in your life. And I think that looks like just serving people. Yeah. Um, I Absolutely. think we look at the scriptures and see what did Jesus do? What, how was, how did he interact with people? Jesus was the biggest servant of all. And so I think every single day of your life, you have the opportunity, whether in your workplace whether you're at school, whether you're at the grocery store, like you said, smiling or helping people. Like me, I drive a limousine, and I love, I love, love driving, and I love serving people. I get the opportunity to serve people. Um, but I also love driving down the streets of Phoenix and seeing that homeless man at the corner and buying him a McDonald's, you know what I mean, the McDouble or something. And so it's like, it's like it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it, where you're at, like who the people are. If there's people in your path, I think God's just called you to serve them yeah. and love That's them good. right That's where good. they're at. So good. So while we're on the, oh, did you want to, so while we're on the topic of, you know, career and money and things like that, how as young adults who are still figuring things out, haven't mastered life and finances and all of that, still learning to make ends meet, how do you trust God in the area of generosity, in the area of your money? That one, that one's like a, it's a pretty difficult one to grasp if you're not like, you know, fully submerged in like this whole like, you know, church thing you know what I mean yeah but growing up and everything just watching my parents continue and continue and can continue to give no matter um what we, what we were going through at the time as a family I mean we have you know six siblings and so like we have a big family but they still continue to give and that's just something that you know even growing up that we were sown you know pretty much into every fiber of our being is that no matter your money situation, you still continue to be generous. Just because, not just because like, you know, the Bible says, you know, give and it'll be given back to you. But when you're generous, it's an act of love and an act of love is an act of worship. That's and so good. when you are generous with your money, you're worshiping at the same that's time. Amazing. That's really good. That's amazing. An act of love is an act of worship. So good. So I good. hope one of you wrote that Write down. Write that down. Write it down. Yeah. Anybody else want to speak? Actually, I do. Um, so before I even knew what tithing was or had any, heard any, offering sermon, whatever you want to call it about it. I was just like a freshman in college. And I was like, yes, like I found a home, a church community that loves me. And what can I do? And 
just without really knowing, like it was almost an instinct to just give. Um, so I, I gave because that's what everybody else was doing around me. They passed the buckets around. I was like, oh yes, like the Lord has done so much for me. I will give. And it wasn't until I got older that tithing was like, oh my gosh, like this is a bigger deal than I thought. Like the Lord is asking so much of me or the scriptures tell us to give 10%. And I was like, that is a big deal. Like, you know, things got tight. You're not a freshman anymore. Your mom's not sending you money. You have to support yourself. And so I kind of like looked at what I had and I was like, I have to give 10% of this. So I really love just going back to the Lord um, loves a cheerful giver and to reminding myself of that young person that I was who was so happily happy to give anything I could. So I feel like in those times where I where money's stressful that I just go back to that moment and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to give cheerfully and remind myself of all the good things that the Lord has done and just give what I can. Um, so yeah. That's really good. That's awesome. One yeah. of my big things is that when, when it comes to tithing, a lot of people our age, um, they think, okay, whenever I'm rolling in the dough, okay, when yeah. I make that first million, then if I'll I start, win the lottery. If I win the lottery, I'm going to give 10% of it to the yeah. church. I'm like, you don't give 10% of what you have now. You're not going to give it. Come on. And so uh -huh. um, my thing is that it doesn't matter whether you're a millionaire or you're working some um, minimum wage job, 10% is 10%. Yeah, yeah the number change. doesn't change. The number doesn't change. Yeah. Whatever 10% yeah, so of their true. income is, it's, it's, it's literally the exact same portion of the pie, okay? They may have a bigger pie, but they're still giving um, the, the same portion you are. And that's why I love that God doesn't call us to give an amount, you know? It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't call us to give an amount because it, 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 it requires faith for each person. And my big thing is that I don't really think it's faith until it hurts. You know what I mean? I don't really think yeah. it's faith until it, it doesn't, like, I don't know how I'm going to live on the other side of this. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? Um, up so until true. then, it's just human logic and reasoning and just a yeah. generosity. Um, but I really do think when you're like, God, if you don't, like, be a man of your word, as I step out on your word, I'm going to sink, okay? Uh -huh. Like, the lights are getting turned off, okay? I am going hungry. <laughs> I'm going on Weight Watchers, and not because I submitted to the program, <laughs> but because my weight is going to drop because I ain't eating. I yeah. guess we're fasting, Dang. okay? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, wow. it, that, it's until you step out onto that word and you're saying, God, I'm not living on money. I'm living on you. I'm living on what you say. I'm living on your next word. Um, that's when all of a sudden it really does become generosity. And I just want to challenge everybody watching. If you're not already tithing, man, become a tither. Okay. I've seen in my own life, I've had seasons in my life where it was harder for me to, to give that first, the first fruits of my paycheck. One of the things I, I'm, I really do try to be militant on is as soon as I know that direct deposit hit, the first thing I do is give my tithe. Mm -hmm. That first that first bit, because I really do believe that if we give that first portion to God, he'll bless the rest. So good. He really will, he'll just make it so happen. Good. And I've just seen story after story after story. And I know people personally who, who don't tithe and they're barely making it. Yeah. And I know people who by all means should be barely making it and they tithe and they somehow have more than enough. And yeah. not only that, but their disposition in life Life is better. They just have an, a better outlook, a better relationship with God. And so generosity, it literally just unlocks a facet of your relationship with God that nothing else can. It that's really so does. good. Yeah, 100%. That's, so good. that's awesome, bro. And I think as you step into this, this, if it's new to you, man, just remember that this isn't something you have to do. This is something you get to Come do. Come on. This Absolutely. is something yes. that should Come be on. out of the generosity of your heart. Yeah. I think so many times, <laughs> if we're going to be honest, like um, being a college kid and trying to live off of this and live off of that. But um, the, you know, the Bible says that where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Mm. And so I think at, at the same time, we just look at ourselves and, and, and where is our, you know, you go on your bank statement and you figure out, dang, I'm going to this place a lot. I'm spending too much money here at this food spot. But where, where truly is your heart? You know, I, I sit down and just reflect, like, where's my heart? You know That's what I mean? Good. If That's your good. heart is for the kingdom, is, if your heart is for people, for people coming to know Jesus, then man, it's going to be, it's going to be something, an overflow of what you get to do, what you want to do. Nobody's going to have to shove it down your throat and tell you you have to. No, something you get to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that if yes. your bank statement doesn't say you go to church, then you might not be getting that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if people, if like wow. your, your, your CPA doesn't look at like your expenditures, Oh, you might be a Christian. Because everyone like, in our okay, young might not be, is CPA. You might, okay, an accountant, okay. But if, <laughs> if, if, if somebody who looks at <laughs> your money going in and out and doesn't say, hey, this person obviously yeah. prioritizes God in church, um, then chances are you're not trusting God. You know yeah. What I mean? And it comes back to like a lot of these things we've looked at with like, 
your calling and your relationships and stuff like that. If you trust God here, he'll bless you in, in other areas too. So yeah. I think that's really good. For real, it's awesome. And we have an audience question here uh, for Mauricio. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, where does you. one feel more alive? In the 480 or the 325? <laughs> Is that even a question? I've been alive in 325. Feel alive in the 325. Oh, I, I almost wore my shirt okay. too. I am born and raised in San Angelo. I love this place with all my heart. I, I can't wait to, to be back home. It's it, even just being here for a break. Did y'all hear that Hill song? Did you hear that? He can't <laughs> wait that, to be back home. You don't own him. <laughs> We're obviously right. trusting God's will. I'll be back home hopefully for summer. And so, yeah. But cool. All yeah. right. So back to our questions. Um, <laughs> It was, it was a good one. How do you prioritize kingdom culture or the way, you know, the, the Bible describes how we're supposed to be and act and, you know, the Ten Commandments and all of those things, the kingdom culture over pop culture and what's happening in the world right now while still remaining relevant? So you, you live how the Bible tells you to live versus how the world tells you to live, but you also remain relevant to those who are living like the world, you know? And so how do you find that in your own lives? Well, honestly, like just kind of in, in my life and just kind of like my friend group, you know, we go out and we go to the gym and we go out and we hang out with people, you know, who wouldn't call themselves Christians and who aren't like in the church all the time. And it seems, you know, to, you know, the more I realize that the more that we are acting like Christ is the more they kind of flock to us. We really don't have to change the way that we live to stay relevant. I mean, they just kind of flock to us and our relevance isn't really based on, you know, how they think life should be lived, but they just kind of seem to, you know, kind of like ships to a uh, um, thing, I mean, a lighthouse, you know, they just kind of flock to it. And so they just kind of flock to us. The more that we start living, you know, the, the way we're supposed to live and have that kingdom, you know, mindset and that kingdom lifestyle, just the more relevant we are, you know, it just kind of happens that's that good. way. And kindness is attractive. And that's yeah. Yeah. Kind, kindness is attractive. I think people are begging for permission to be different. You know what I mean? Um, Ooh, yeah. If you notice like a junior high kid, as soon as he gets around friends who allow him to tap into that freakier side of himself or herself, all of a sudden they, they take on a new nature. Why? Because they found a, a group who gave them permission to yeah. be that. And I really do think um, people our age, they're looking for permission to be different. They're looking mm -hmm. for permission to be kind. Yeah. They're looking for permission to have a standard and to know that they're worth something, that they're not worth what the scale tells them or their bank account statements tell them, but they're worth um, the blood of Jesus. And so I really think whenever you just realize that God's already given you permission to be different, that I, I don't need you to approve of uh, the way I follow Jesus or the way I worship him in order to keep doing it, but you remain true to yourself. Like a lot of people think that when you become a Christian, you've got to like check your personality at the door. And I am so against that. God does not want cookie cutter on, Christian come on, children. Come on. Okay, yep. he made us all different for a reason. Okay, you can like the things you like. You can rock it the way you want to rock it, all right? As long as it's God honoring and you're considering him and, and all those things. Um, I really do believe that we have the, the freedom to, to be who God truly made us to be. And the question you've got to first then answer is, who did God truly make you to be? Because there are a lot yeah. of people saying, yeah, like, God truly good. made me to be this. But if it contradicts his word, then he didn't truly make you to be that. You know yeah. what I mean? And so we've got to answer those questions. And then once you find the answers there, then, man, run wild. Be everything that God's called you to be. I think that I, I can speak to what Weston's saying, that when we do, like, go to the gym or we go somewhere else, people genuinely are and it's not because of anything we do, but they're, they're attracted to us. Like they come yeah. to us and they're like, where, where, what church do you go to again? What church do you pastor again? And I'm like, Celebration Church. Like, when do y'all meet? I've never been to church, but I'd be down to check it out. If they let you in, they let you talk there, then like, I'm going to come. Yeah, they, they, they like, like you Honestly, and stuff. Though? Like I, I see my, they see themselves in me. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they realize that they can have tattoos. They can have a weird funky haircut and they can care about going to the gym and still like love Jesus. And I think um, the best witness you could ever be is just being who God truly made you to be. That's oh, great. come on. That's great. That's awesome. We know the scripture says that we're, we're in the world, but not, we're not of the world. So, Very good. Um, I, and I love that. Um, I don't know. It's it's a good question. It's a loaded question because we live in a culture where everybody wants to be um, everyone wants to be famous. Everyone wants to be the thing. Everyone wants to be it. But I think, like Kita said, when when you just be who God's called you to be, um, that's where that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna take off. I think. And um, for me, what's what I've recognized in this in this society in this culture is that 
people are people are hungry for Jesus. There, there, there's literally people walking around you in your workplace, in your schools that are hungry for Jesus, but aren't saying anything. So I think as believers, um, our job isn't to go around acting like we have it all together. It's not our job to act, oh, you're not a Christian. Ah, I am, sorry. No, you, our job isn't to do that. Our job is to, you know what, be a human being. You're a human just like they yeah. are. The only difference is that you got Christ living inside of you, and that's exactly what they're hungry for. So I yeah. would encourage you, man, just just keep keep living a Christ-like life. Uh, I'm not saying you have to have it all together, no, but just be human and be open. Be open to conversations, like people said. That's be good. open to uh, to talking about. And, and and I think I think when you come to a place where you recognize your foundation, and you're not embarrassed, you're not ashamed, you recognize what Jesus has done for you, you're going to walk around this town knowing who you are in Christ and you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna shy down from that so absolutely yeah I'd encourage everybody good. and I think speaking on influence we can go ahead and jump to the next question which is with all the negativity and the comparison and the competition that runs and pretty much takes over social media how do you guys use social media personally and you know you can even speak to through using it through the church but um to shine positivity and so I know um, most of you have pretty loyal um, followers on social media. Weston's not very active no. on this social media. Question, so this might not be Weston's question <laughs> here. But um, the three of you have pretty solid followings and people that look up to you. So how do you use that influence to point people towards Jesus personally? Okay. So this was, this was actually hard for me initially because, of course, it is, like, natural for us to like do it for the likes. Um, so it was hard, it, it was honestly, it was hard to navigate through that. But it came to this point where it was like, you know what? Like you have this desire to be authentic and you have this desire to be real and you just want to portray that. And I think going back to what Mauricio said, like be who God created you to be. And I feel like once you um, have that inside yourself and that'll 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 play off in your Instagram and your social media and so for me at the beginning it was really strategic and now since I'm like you know what I'm doing this as raw as I can now like we include the behind the scenes so you can see how ugly it really is. Yeah. Like the picture looks <laughs> yeah. cute, but look at what we were really doing in the middle of the street in San Angelo, Texas on a rainy day. And I don't, my shoes don't even look good. Like I think once you just have the, once you find your freedom and who you are in Christ, like you're more vulnerable and um, that comes across in your, in your feed, like trans authenticity is transparent in your feed. Once you, that's, that's really good. Yeah. I, no, that's great. Um, yeah, and I, I think Carissa kind of hit the nail right on the head there. Authenticity, I think, is is where is where you find common ground with people. You know, I, I, I truly do believe that people relate far more with your weaknesses than they do your strengths. Yeah. And we, on that's Instagram, good, we have a lot of people flexing. On Instagram, yeah. straight flexing. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so, well, and then there's nothing wrong with that. Like if, and, and sometimes you don't even mean to, and people will call it that because, you know, everybody has detractors, everybody has haters, everybody has trolls, okay? There will always be those people who look for an opportunity to put somebody down. But as long as you know that you're truly being authentic to who God made you to be and your motives are, your motives are pure and clear, um, to the pure, all things are pure. The Bible says that. To the pure, all things are pure. So you may have complete and total clean motives and to a world that's completely and totally impure, they're gonna try and, they're gonna try and projectile vomit their impurities the, onto yeah. you. And so yeah, good. Um, I really do believe that if you're, if you're willing to bleed in front of your followers, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that mm -hmm. you have to let out all your dirty laundry and all that stuff, but if you're willing to like, show your humanity if you're willing to show that like you like mauricio said that that you don't have it all together um then it'll be it'll be what it's it's cre it's been created to be and the truth is we have so much negativity like brooklyn said so much um just comparison competition all of that is just uh, social media is a breeding ground for that and i believe that if you will get loud about jesus um people will wonder uh, what is, and, and, and eventually the lights are going to come back on on social media and in this room, okay? But um, <laughs> eventually, people are going to wonder, like, 
why do you really believe that? Like, you're cool. You have, like, cool pictures, like Carissa says, and she posts. She posts really cool stuff. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. But um, you're welcome. Brooklyn's her photographer. Her photographer. Shameless plug. Okay? But um, people are going to wonder, like, I totally dig the stuff you wear. I totally vibe with your aesthetic and all this stuff. Um, why do you believe in Jesus? Why do, you, um, why do you want him? Why do you love him? And so I really do think if you'll just remain authentic you'll, and be who God's created you to be, then it'll be all right. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, man. Instagram, man. Uh, it's it's huge. It's a big deal. Um, the comparison's real. It can be dark sometimes, but I, I don't think it always has to be dark. Um, I think you can choose whether you want your gram to be dark or not. Um, and this is an opportunity for us as believers. Like, we literally have a platform yeah. that literally connects with the entire world. And so my question is to you, what are you going to what are you gonna What are you gonna post? You know what I mean. Uh, I'm not saying you gotta post every every scripture. Yeah. You gotta post your morning diva. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But, um, man, be you. Be be a human being. That's good. And uh, let uh let those conversation let those things be conversation starters, uh, for uh, people to come to know Jesus. Yeah. So one good. last thing, just off of that, is, um, it's not just this platform to post pictures like you have the opportunity to be so creative with it it's more than just posting your about your life that's good that's good um i think that's what makes it this really interesting tool it's is that you get to be like for me like i love arts artsy stuff doodly things and that's that's where i get to let the lord's gifts that he's given me like shine through that so i can post I can create some doodle on it and then post it and then it reaches other people and then there's no greater joy than that is being able to just be yourself and allow God to work through your creativity. And we actually that. had a question come in for you on that topic. Um, what advice would you give those that have struggles with being authentic out of a fear of rejection? Ooh, that's a good wow. It's a fear, but it's not a reality. Um, good. Part of being authentic is being vulnerable. You don't know who's going to accept you. But the good thing is, is that there are people ready to accept you. Um, and you're not going to know that until you do it. And I think if you really just lean in on who, what gifts God has given you, what, um, and that can look a whole bunch of different ways. Maybe you like to sing, throw up a song. Maybe you like to doodle, throw up a doodle. Maybe That's you good. like That's to good. do some sketch art, throw up a sketch art and just start small. And then little by little, you'll gain your gain this confidence, and you'll gain new friends, and then watch God. So that's good. really good. That's, yeah, really that good. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like really good. And I God. think that I, like all of us can attest that social media has been a huge blessing um, for all of us. It's taken us places we we never thought um, we would get to go. Like I, obviously, like I've gotten to travel from it. Mauricio's gotten to travel from it. Carissa's made some amazing connections through it. Um, it's just, it's just such a great tool. And if you, if you lay it before God, God will, God will use it. Yeah. Yeah, Wes is just laughing over there because he has zero things you say something, <laughs> social <bro>? media. <laughs> it, it, it's a wonderful tool. <laughs> for this, literally for how we are connecting with yeah. you right yeah, now. Exactly. So that's pretty how many cool. How have you logged into Instagram this week? I get on there to like other people's pictures. That's awesome. <laughs> You're a real bro. I don't get on there to post. He doesn't okay. even uh, share that. young adults. That, what? I, that. <laughs> I said he doesn't even share young adults. Like, he literally posts nothing. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know. It's, for, okay. for, for those it's who, not for everybody, though. It, no, it's not again, for everybody. That is true. You know, social media is not the one and only way to reach people outside Absolutely. of your inner circle and outside of your friend group. Um, but for those who do utilize it and do utilize it in a positive way, I really appreciate it because I get to benefit from it. Like I get to benefit from all three of these people, all four, because Brooklyn posts a lot of positive stuff on her feed as well. And honestly, being the person who gets to benefit off stuff like that, it really brightens up my day when I see positivity uh, in a change, you know, in a world where pretty much 85% of everything else is negative. And so... For those who do utilize yeah. it in a positive way, I say I salute you, keep going, be weird, be authentic. And I would just think, you know, go for it, yeah. you know? And like Weston said, it's not the only way no. to reach people. I mean, we'll be standing in the line literally anywhere in Weston. We'll just turn around and strike up a conversation. He doesn't with know every, a stranger. Every single stranger, which is what you would think Weston, Weston would be so good at social media because yeah. nobody's a stranger. Just but really he just isn't. He like, just That just isn't him. Idiot. He's the guy in Market Street that turns around and just starts talking to the person <laughs> behind him. And so, I mean, like, whatever platform you have is the platform you should use for Amen. sure. 
Um, so next we're going to be speaking on uh, serving. So everybody here has Ooh. served or does serve on multiple teams. Yes. Um, That's true. How do you <laughs> deal with burnout while serving on multiple teams? You know, burnout for maybe people that don't get it from the term is just you're just serving so much that you just get exhausted and you feel like you're not you're not making an impact anymore and what are you even doing here and I'm just tired and people are just using me how do you avoid going negative and going dark when you're serving just so much is it cool if I jump in on this one yeah go for it yeah, okay Wes. cool so um you know with serving I do we, we do serve in a lot of groups uh, all of us up here do and honestly it, you come to more notice that those who get burnt out more have and I really hate to say this, but I'm going to step on some toes here, but it's fine because, you know, we're young adults. But those who do get burnt out more have less of a one-on-one -on -one social time with God. You know, because when you are burnt out, you are no longer filled up. You know, it's like a, when a car runs out of gas, you know, there's, there's nothing left in it for it to run. So if you're not constantly letting yourself one-on-one -on -one be, you know, be poured into by God and be fed by God on your own daily time, then you are going to get burnt out a lot quicker if you are just feeding, 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 you come to realize that you have nothing else to feed and you actually have emptied your own tank. And so um, I would say the key to like not really getting burnt out is to not letting yourself be unfed. Um, you know, the, the, more, the more you That's are fed. That's really good. That's yeah, really important. Thank you. The more that you are fed, you know, <laughs> the less you'll feel burnt out. And so, you know, Very really good. just stay dedicated with your one-on-one -on -one time with God and Burnt, be, feeling burnt out and that burnt out feeling is not going to be a problem for you. You got to spend really time with good. the HG. Holy Ghost. That's really Come good. Come on. Every Holy day. Ghost. HG. Wow, that's awesome. It's a new one. I've heard that one. Hey, I learned it not Does that long ago. Does anybody else want to add in on that or did you feel like Weston covered that? I think, I think it was really good. Um, you know, they say when you feel like giving up, remember why you started. You know what I mean? Oh, that's oh, good. That's and good. so I like that. anytime that, because um, I'll be real, like I, I've, like people think I'm impervious to burnout because like I, I work at a church and that is not true. And let me just tell you, um, I don't get paid to do everything I do around here. A lot of the times when people see me at the church, I'm not clocking hours. That Those hours do not show up on my timesheet because guess what? I still am a member of Celebration Church. Um, I still serve. I'm a part of the dream team here, you know what I mean? And so I serve at youth. Obviously, I serve as the young adult pastor here at the church, but I serve on our worship team. I don't get paid to play. I don't get paid to preach on Thursday nights. I don't get paid to be at youth, okay? Um, and so I get paid for my nine to five hours here. And so any t anything else out of that is me just volunteering and yeah, me just awesome. committing yeah. to be a part of the house of God. And I don't, I don't begrudge um, not getting paid for that time. I don't feel like if I'm going to do something for the church, then I better get paid for it. No, like I'm a freaking Christian. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Um, Jesus didn't get paid to die for me. Okay. Ultimately his payment was me that I was, I was what he purchased, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, that's what it really comes down to when you remember that you got into this because Jesus got into your life. When you remember yeah, that on. he's so the, he's the reason that you started this whole thing. You entered into his work because he entered into your world. All of a sudden, um, the oxygen begins to come back into your life and you remember, you remember good. why you started. That's, That's good. So, good. so I feel like I should say this about burnout because I think oftentimes we can mistake burnout for our own pride. Um, Ooh. That you can get to this place in ministry where it's like, you know what, it's getting hard for me to do this anymore and it's not because you're burnt out but it's because you feel too good. You feel like, well, how come she gets extra hours at the donut table? Um, I can smile better than her. I think come that's on, when you Preach. have to go back to Snap. the HG, check yourself and make sure that you have that, that the Lord put you there. Like maybe it's your time to go. Maybe that's not, maybe God's calling you to a different area of serving. And, and he needs to make room for somebody else to shine in that area. So I think, if you're using the word burnout, really check yourself. Um, is it burnout or is there something else going on? And if that's, that's the awesome. case, that's really good. don't let it don't let it fester in your Come mind. On. I think it's good to talk to someone in that area of leadership and say, "Hey, this is how I feel," because it could just be all in your head. So, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna piggyback off of that if that's cool. I remember before coming to Celebration Church, uh, man, this was this was years ago. I remember serving. Uh, and I remember uh, coming to a place where I was just done. Yeah. And I was just like, man, this is, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with, 
done with all this, but when I really when I really started to like investigate, if I can use that word, that's a good word. absolutely, yeah. great, great word. word. Thank you, thank you. Good I've been, word. been Ten practicing. Points. Scrabble. I knew if I came to like be on this panel, how to use big words. So that's a big word. You're a regular gumshoe. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, when I began to when I began to really investigate my heart, I, I recognized that you know what, I'm so done with this serving thing because I'm recognizing that I'm not getting what I want from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and can I just tell you that the truth is this: is that when you serve. God, God's working through, but it's never about you. It's about other that's people. Really good. It's about it's about the people who. That's why we serve. That's why people walk through these doors every single day because it's about them. It, it's it's not about it's not about you. You know. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sorry, boo boo. It ain't right. about yes. you. If I, could, I would like to piggyback off of something Carissa said. She did say, you know, Double talk piggyback. to somebody and tell them how you're feeling. That is one thing. Don't don't keep it to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel like That's good. You, know, you have to keep your burnout to yourself because you feel like, you know, nobody can know I feel burnt out. It's something that everybody goes through. I mean, I said everything I said before because it's something I have to live out, honestly, all the time. Like, I have to check myself quite a bit. And so don't keep it to yourself and don't feel like you're the only one walking, you know, walking yeah. through this burnt out or being like, be like ashamed of it, you know, because everyone around you wants to help you, you know, build you up, not, you know, build you up, not beat you up. Well, I think it also comes not, to a thing oh. where you need to be speaking and you know, venting to the right person. If you're venting yes, to somebody else who is burnt out, I've we experienced all, this all. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Brooklyn. Yes, thank heart, you. Heart, heart, heart for Ooh. Brooklyn. If you, if you vent to the wrong person who's also that. burnt out, you're just gonna be nothing together. And so Come you really on. need You'll to- be nothing <laughs> together. I like <laughs> so it. You, you need to throw up and you need to throw your issues up to somebody who is ahead of you. And something I heard at a, at a conference Come one on. time is you throw it up and so, whether it's if you're serving on our young adults lead team please come and tell us if you're feeling burnt out don't tell each other come and come and tell us because we're the ones that can that can fix the situation we can you know either pull you back Shaniqua or give can't you more fix your stuff. situation okay Shaniqua. we don't have a we don't have a don't that's why i said it <laughs> if we do now now we don't <laughs> Love you, Shaniqua. I think, oh, and just yeah. be hungry. Please come. Like, stay hungry. If stay you're encouraged. Shaniqua, please Keep come. moving forward. You know what I mean? Like, well, don't be that person that was like once, just you know, not just a member, but in the member, and then like, man, God, I just want to be used, you know? And then God uses you, and then you get to the point where like, oh, they're just using me, you know? Just using yeah, me. Yeah, and it's like, that's what you no, like that's what you kind of asked for, you know? So let's be those people that stay, you know, stay on fire for Jesus, yeah, you know, yeah. for people. Yeah, Stay, and mix it up. Stay. I think is a good thing. Also, when it comes to volunteering, is like if you're getting tired of greeting, you know, go join the food team or go join the tech team and learn a new trait. Because there's there's so many different things you can learn. I don't even know all the things that you can learn working on the team, and I'm here all the time. And so I think it's just if you're getting bored, mix it up. Go join some other. Go join some other team. So I think that's really and, good. And, on and trust your leadership. Um, yeah. If you think that you're ready and they think that, hey, it may not be your moment, this may, you need to like steep a little bit more like I was talking about earlier, just trust that, okay? Because even if they're wrong, even if it was your moment to shine, God's gonna honor the fact that you honored your leader. Like Come seriously, on. you're gonna get blessed and you'll deal with them. That's you know what I'm saying? Good. The fact, Please. even if you honor bad so leadership, true. you will still be honored by God because you honored your leadership. Amen. And so yeah. just Amen. trust that they're hearing from God and trust that they, they're in the flow too. I think even all of us have been through times where we wanted something and we wanted to serve in a certain position and we weren't ready yet. And it kind of was like, oh, I feel ready. Like I want it, I am ready. And then looking back, I'm like, I was nowhere near ready. 100%. Like, thank God they 100%. didn't give me those, those small group girls at that point. Cause I would yeah. not have known what to tell them. And I hadn't yes. been through anything yet. Or, you know, thank God I wasn't on the worship team at that point because I wasn't confident and I wouldn't have been, you know, alive at that point. And so I think there's just times where we need to just die to ourselves and what we want and just like thrive under our leadership. And Come I think on, that's a really Brooklyn. good point. We should Amazing. all take what Keenan says, seriously, <laughs> as our leadership. Thank you. That was not, yeah, I was talking about <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, 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 I mean, forgot I was the leader leadership. for a second. <laughs> He's just equal. I was just talking as a brother, brother in Christ. That's funny. <laughs> so on that topic, how do you think serving impacts your relationship with God? So have you personally seen that serving has impacted that. So Jesus was serving with his bromies. Like Ooh, good. he was good. serving alongside them. That was his ministry was serving with other people. And I think, what was the question? 
How is it? Well, it's how is your how has serving impacted your relationship with God? Okay, there you go. That's where I was going on the topic of friendship. So I've developed some amazing relationships just serving along people. So these people beside me right now, we are really good friends and I can I trust them with anything. I can go to them for anything. And it's because we've served alongside each other for so long. And um, yeah, serving friendship. And I, I honestly think serving is the key to friendship. Yes. Um, wow. Honestly, Mauricio is one of, is, is my best friend. Best. You are my best friend. Okay. You, I don't know if we're still allowed to say that as like people who are in can our I mid hope, 20, Can I hold we just have a moment? You're my best friend. Um, 25, 27. <laughs> yeah. But friend. we have literally been all over the country together. And it wasn't because we were just neighborhood friends or anything like that. No, it was because he was committed to the house of God. I was committed to the house of God. And we just happened to look up by who the person was laboring next to me. And it turned out we ended up becoming best friends. So true. And so really good. Some, like the best place to find uh, a, a friendship, and let's be honest, even a potential spouse is yep. in the house of God, yep. okay? And if you just begin to serve and you just begin to plug away um, and you look up who's tilling the ground next to you, so to speak, you know what I mean? Um, all of a sudden it's like, man, like, let's just continue to do life together. Let's go get get coffee let's hang out let's go to new york together you know what i mean like you just never yeah. know like what's gonna go to happen new york so, together. yeah i just think i mean serving has brought me m- literally my all of my friends i love that bro thank you yeah i had to give you a little plug oh uh, i'm gonna cry go ahead bro oh me i think so wasn't it oh man i mean I, I agree i mean if if you ask me serving is everything like if you don't know what to do and you feel like you're called to ministry and you don't know where to get started start serving i would say that's the you know that's the best way to get into it. And when you're serving, you're loving people. And like I said earlier, when you're doing an act of love, you're doing an act of worship. And so as you are serving people, not only are you helping everyone around you, but you're worshiping at the same time. And so when you are worshiping, you're drawing closer to God and God's drawing closer to you. So yeah. when, you're, when, when you're serving, you're worshiping and you're, just, you're, God, you're loving on God and God's loving on you. And as you're loving yeah. on everyone around you, you're building relationships that are built on a basis and a foundation of God and, and worship. Yeah, and I, I real quickly I want to say this because the whole thing is about serving in your relationship with God, and we've really hit on your relationship with people. But there's this whole thing, there's this 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 a mindset that's crept into the church that it's just it's just me and Jesus, it's just me and Jesus, and you truly cannot be one with God when you isolate yourself from His body. So Come you know on, what I mean? so you have that's to be good. intimately acquainted. Um, in an appropriate manner with his his body. And if you're pushing people out, you're going to miss pockets. You're going to miss little facets of who God is that you're not going to be able to pick up in just your one-on-one time. There are going to be facets of God that you're going to see in your best friend, that you're going to see in maybe even people you're like, ah, I don't really know if I like you or not. But they're going to show you a little aspect of who Jesus is yeah. that you're yeah. not going to pick up when you're good. just seeking him in, your, amazing, in the scriptures and stuff. So, so you need his body just, like, just as much as you need him. Yeah. Come on. So yeah. Good. So good. I, man, I, piggyback off that, man, if, Jesus, if God himself is within a community, I mean, how much more? How yeah. much more do, do we need community? And so, man, serving and... I've heard that somewhere. Where have you heard it at? I, never mind. <laughs> I miss, all right, let's be honest, all right? I stole it from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's I so good, though. You guys. It's really good. Thanks, I'll bro. retweet that. Thank you. Wait, who'd you get it from? <sighs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> So besides Jesus, who do you listen to for encouragement? Do you listen to people in your life physically, people online? Who do you listen to for encouragement spiritually or just day to day? Who are those people that you turn to? <laughs> that was awesome. I thought that might be funny. I think, I think you got to be careful. I think you want to uh, be open to people. Be, be open to people who you know truly love you people who truly want the best for you. That's good. So um, you're not just going to go to a rando and be like, hey, what do you think about my life? Where should I be? You know what I mean? Like, nah, man. Like, You want to be able to be uh, asking these questions to people who like, and allow people to speak into you who really, really love you and want the best for you. And so, yeah. I agree. Definitely, you got to be careful with with who you allow, you know, to speak into your life, into, you know, those inner parts of who you are. You know, there are those people who can talk about like, you know, like with fitness, you know, I'll take I'll take fitness advice from pretty much anybody who, who looks like, you know, they know what they're talking <laughs> about. You know what I mean? But when it comes to actually like speaking into my life, into my core being, you know, into who I am, like not as just like a person, but as a child of God, you know, you really have to be careful with who you allow speak to that, that part of you. And honestly, um, t- talking to your pastor, I would say not just, you know, t- of course, like letting Jesus speak to that part of you because, you know, he created you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And so, but also um, just having a, a really, a really, really tight group of friends who, you know, 
aren't afraid to call you on your crap, you know, aren't afraid to call you out when, you know, you're straying away or, or, or you're falling, or falling back or backsliding and letting them just, you know, do it in a loving way, you know, where, you know, the Holy Spirit's in the middle of it and it's, you know, it's smooth, it's loving, but at the same time, you know, it's constructive criticism. You know, they're going to build you up and not beat you up, but, you know, you have to allow, you know, there are very few people, especially in my life, there are very few people who I would say I allow to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's really good, bro. Yeah, so having those few people that you allow to have that, that you can go for for that sound counsel. Um, if you don't have someone in your life now that you can go to for um, advice or counseling, I highly suggest it. There's, like Weston said, like be very careful about who you allow to speak into your life because they're speaking into your life like that is your life. So if you don't have someone, I highly suggest seeking them out. Um, usually someone who is kind of like a discipleship, like someone who is older, who has been through it, um, and that you trust, and that the key is like them really knowing you. Um, and you have to give also, being vulnerable about who you are and wanting to accept that. I think um, one of the things, the misconceptions I had whenever I was a kid, and I wish that it weren't this way, but that you can just read any Christian book, you can watch any Christian preacher, and that you can take everything they say at face value and and take it and apply it to your life. And the truth is, is that if anyone isn't preaching the true gospel, and that's that you are saved by grace through faith, that is not of your own works, lest any of us should boast, that if they're preaching that you've got to do X, Y, Z, one, two, and three in order to get to God, um, you need to cut them out of your life, okay? And so the truth is, is that the older I've gotten, the less people I have really allowed to speak into me. And that includes a lot of preachers, okay? There are a lot of preachers I used to really like as a kid. And now I'm like, that I'm older and I've reevaluated my theology. I'm like, I can't listen to you anymore. Like this, this isn't right. This is toxic. Um, this isn't, this isn't breeding anything good. It's my relationship with God. It's making my relationship with God very transactional. You know what I'm saying? That I do this in order to get you to do this. It's very manipulative yeah. rather than just staying in step with him. And so yeah. there's a passage um, in Genesis where it says that Isaac, he went and found a well that Abraham, his grandfather had dug. And it says that he redug the well. And the reason he had to redig it was because the Philistines would come by every single day and put handfuls of dirt down in that well. It wasn't that they came in with a backhoe one day and filled it up. No, it was little bit by little bit over time, they began to contaminate his water source. And Isaac had to do the hard thing of going down in there and removing what an enemy had placed inside inside of his water source or inside of him. And so one of the things that we've got to do is if we're not every single day renewing our mind, letting God come in and remove that dirt that the, uh, that the enemy has tried to place down inside of us or other people have tried to place inside of us, over time, it may not, our water may not taste that different the next day, but, a while, but not too far from now, you're gonna have a clog. And you're gonna wonder, where did this happen? When, oh God, you've left me. But it's no, it's because you've allowed the wrong voices. Wow. You've allowed yes. the bad thoughts. You've allowed these negative opinions uh, about who God is or who you are to come in and take root in your life. And you're gonna allow, have to allow God to come in and, and dig that out. I can't dig that out of me. That's good. Mauricio can't dig that out of me. God has to come in so and dig that out of me. But I've got to recognize yes. that it's there in order to let him into that spot. You know come on. I mean? so. Yeah. So our last question tonight comes from, from the audience, uh, and it's mainly for Keenan, but I'd like each of you to kind of speak on it just a little bit. Um, it is, what is the big dream for young adults? Ooh. So each of you cover kind of a different area, and Mauricio, I think just kind of young adults in ministry overall, maybe specifically since you were here in the beginning, but um, Weston covers one area, Krista covers another area, and Keenan overall. So I don't know if you want to go first or last in this last. I think so. So maybe if one of you guys want to jump in on it first, Weston. Oh, what is man. the big dream when it comes to this young adults group? To this young adults group. Well, honestly, um, for for me, it's it's growth. You know, being the you know the environment guy. You know, being the guy. You know, I set up the tables and you know the table for the donuts and I set up all the couches and you know the table for the donuts and everything. Um, <laughs> I would like to. I would like to. You know. For me, like the, the big vision is to get to a point to where we can't use the couches anymore and we have to go solely to chairs, you know, and to, you know, eventually outgrowing the room where a YA nights is a normal Thursday night, you know what I mean, where, where the numbers we're seeing. But not just that, but also, you know, the quality of people, you know, 
um, you know, quantity is great and everything. You know, having an abundance of something is awesome. But if you, you know, if you're not growing, and if we're not able to grow everybody that's in our group, and they can't grow in our young adults group, then um, I don't think we should be running the numbers. That if that were to happen, you know what I mean. And so not only to run, you know, big numbers, but big numbers of people who can grow in our group. So that's really good. S- staying with the mindset of having a smaller group and being intimate in that smaller group, but being able to do that on a larger scale. It's awesome. Yeah, I think, man, I love Celebration Church. This is this is my home. This is my home. I'm off going to college, but this You're is right. home. So um, Celebration Church Young Adults transformed my life from the very beginning when I was in Keenan and Pastor Brandon and uh, Pastor Chris's living room, uh, sitting on the stairs, watching Keenan preach. And uh, yeah, yeah, um, it radically transformed my life forever. And the moment I walked through those doors, I'll be honest, uh, five years ago, I didn't, I didn't really have community. And so I think if I can talk on behalf of everybody here that I think one of the goals is that every person that walks through those doors across the hall at, in young adults, that the goal is for them to find community, for them to find love, for them to find peace, for them to find comfort, for them to find Jesus. 100%. I think that's the ultimate goal. Absolutely. So I was mentoring a first-generation ASU student like two years ago. And after one of my meetings, um, I called Keenan like right away. And I was just like almost to tears because... I remember this. I was... She asked me a question. She said, so you go to church, right? How do you do that? And that really just broke my heart that she didn't, there's, that there's students out there that don't know how to do church. Um, and church is easy. Church is a community. And it's just like Mauricio said. So for my heart for young adults is just finding those people that are looking for, again, that my heart is all about belonging, is finding a place to come and belong. Um, you have gifts, you have talents, and the Lord wants to use them. And we are opening our arms, opening our doors for you to come in here and let your passions, let your dreams, let your Absolutely. your creativity, let your talents, your gifts, everything come to life. We want to speak life into you. And so if that that's really what it is, is you belong here. There's a place for you to belong. And it might not even be here, but you know what? Come give us a try one night. And there are other great people, great communities of young adults out there in our yeah, city yeah, yeah. Yeah, that are waiting for you absolutely. to belong to them. So if you're just, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I love that. So, so good. good. Yeah, we may, not, we may not be everybody's cup of tea, but we're somebody's cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing that we have to remember because it gets real easy to think like, oh, what, what if people don't like uh, young adults. That, that was a, that was, a, I'll be honest, man. Um, that was something I really struggled with was like, what if people don't like what I have to say? What if people don't, it, it's, it doesn't move them. You know what I mean? But I, all of a sudden God began to put a, God began to put the people on my heart who would resonate with it. And he's like, are you going to rob the people who are going to be transformed by this ministry to have that moment just because there'll be people who won't be transformed by it. Wow, that's and I was good. like, well, dang, man, like when you put it that way, I'm like, I guess we got to do it. You know what I mean? I guess we've got to show up. I guess we've got to turn the mics on. I guess we got to let it rip, you know? And so ultimately, um, the ultimate goal for young adults is to reach as many people as humanly possible. Our goal is to make it impossible for you to ignore Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yes. To make it That's impossible. So you cannot ignore him. You have really to make good. a decision. If you if yeah. you don't have Jesus, it's because you rejected him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that's our goal. We we're, we're here to present Jesus to San Angelo. And I'll be honest, I, I we didn't talk about saying this, but our, our ultimate goal um, for young adults is we would love at some point, and it's it's part of the vision. It's part of our ultimate dream and scheme. This is a big faith we're talking here, but we would love to to fill the Janelle Center. We want to have we want to have an event at the Janelle Center uh, on campus and just see. I just see it in my mind, just like young people all from this area, all from San Angelo, from the surrounding cities, just coming to lift up one name. And Come that's on, not bro. Celebration Church. Yes. That's not Celebration Church. Yes. Young adults. That's not Keenan Clark. That's not Carissa Ramirez. Okay, it is. Jesus. And um, that's what we exist to do. And it's not, it, like Weston said, it's not because we want to have some number. It's because we want to see true revival take place. And true revival isn't a lot of people coming together. True revival is a lot of people coming to Jesus. And that's, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Come on. Boom. Wow. Well, so yeah. We exist to do. Thank you guys so much. I love that, bro. Amazing. Thank that was so good. Yeah. I love Jesus. So there we go. 
Right. And awesome. that's a wrap on our thank panel you. tonight. So thank you guys for coming out and being Thanks part being of our here. panel. Thank you so Love much. you guys. Thanks so for much. sticking Love around. Share this video. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we will see you on the socials. Yeah, so. we love you guys so much. Wash yep. your hands.